It may come as a surprise to many that I actually like the Chaos Engine for the Amiga. It's not the best game ever, but I do enjoy it. This 1993 released game from the Bitmap Brothers lets you and a friend take to the battlefields, blasting everything in sight and solving simple puzzles. The setting is steampunk Victorian England. A time traveller on a reconnaissance mission from the distant future became stranded and his technology came into the hands of the Royal Society, led by Baron Fortsquire, a grand inventor. Fortsquire then retro-engineered many of the futuristic contraptions, creating an entirely different alternative timeline. Now, you playing as one of the badass dudes needs to fix this issue. Transverse through each level, picking up power-ups, gold and keys to pass through the various puzzles and mazes. A number of nodes must be activated via weapon fire to open the final doors at the end of each level. At the end of every second level, the player has the chance to spend their collected riches to upgrade their weapons, increase the number of hit points of their character, purchase new items and improve other character attributes. There was also an Amiga AGA version release, however that isn't shown here. This is the stock Amiga version, the version most Amiga owners would have been playing. Chaos Engine. Although primitive, the machine became incredibly powerful and turned against its creator. Its power to corrupt time and matter was out of control. A cloud of chaos descended over the land. Humans and animals were turned into ravenous beasts. And here we go with the Amiga CD32 version. This is basically the Amiga AGA version and that is basically the base Amiga 500 version but with better colours. What we have here is essentially the same game but now with a rather nice introduction and controls that make use of more than one button. The actual in-game music is pretty much the same as the base Amiga version although there are more sound effects or at least I thought there were. First, this Atari ST port seems to be the same as the Amiga version, but it isn't. The opening music, while the same, is sampled in mono at a very low bitrate, which means it sounds pretty bad. The actual chip generator music, what there is of it, isn't very good. Then we come to the in-game audio. No music at all here, 
no speech either, and pretty poor 8-bit sounding sound effects. The actual game does look reasonably well even with a lack of colour, but it doesn't feel as nice to play as the Amiga version. The whole game just feels unresponsive. Definitely not the best game to show the power of the ST. Next up is the MS-DOS port. This version has two different options for audio, being the Roland MT or the Sound Blaster. We are playing with the Sound Blaster audio for that lovely speech. Looking at this footage, you may notice quite a bit of screen tearing. Well, that all depends upon how fast the PC you're running this game on is. I'm playing this via DOSBox using 486 settings with auto CPU and auto CPU speed. As you can see the game looks fairly good. The status bar now has been removed from the bottom of the screen allowing for more gameplay area and we also have much tighter controls compared to the ST version. Now onto the console ports. This is where the games normally get better, but this Mega Drive version isn't a patch on the Amiga original. Now home computer games tend to run at low frame rates, but console games, especially the 2D ones, should be running at 60 frames per second. It's expected. This game most certainly does not run anywhere near 60 frames per second. The resulting game is a jerky and quite horrible to play experience. Still, it is nice that the speech was kept and isn't even too bad for a Mega Drive. And let's finish up with the Super Nintendo release. Straight away you can see more care went into this port than the Mega Drive version, however it's still not running at 60 frames per second as a console game should be. The graphics are also a little squashed due to the odd resolution the Super Nintendo runs in. The audio is well done though, sounding pretty close to the Amiga original. I say close because it doesn't sound as clear. Funnily, this is the only port with a cut down opening. You may also notice that this and the Mega Drive version had the priest changed to a scientist. Thank 
activated. And let's take a look at all those versions of the Chaos Engine running side by side.